We're going to look at the MathCAD version. And, uh, we'll go through the MathCAD calculation. It was done a few years ago, but I had to update it at the weekend um, because I found a few little niggles in it. So you put in your basic uh, input information. I have a convention where the input information I highlight in yellow and the calculations are then done in plain text. So the input is basically your pile diameter, your pile length, the weight of the hammer, and you can have an estimate for the weight of the anvil and the helmet and so on. Uh, you can derive the uh, pile unit weight, um, usually from timber tables, and then the actual weight of the pile itself based on its length of its area. So you put those all together uh to get the p-value and then you find out uh, put in the free fall height of the hammer in this case it's a meter you add the efficiency of the fall now that can often be uh, taken from the piling rig if that's available if not a simple estimate is that used as 80 percent uh, we've put in the final set here which is s now, an S of 25 millimetres is, is a fairly high set, and I've deliberately done that to spit out the word easy for easy driving. And the coefficient of restitution, the E, comes from the Appendix B of that Civil Engineering Code of Practice. And from the table, you get the E value of 0.25. The efficiency of the blow, eta, is calculated depending on whether your weight pile driving hammer is heavier than the um, weight of the pile and, and the anvil, etc. And you end up with two different formulas. So that's where I put in an if statement to achieve the eta value of 0.75. And then we carry on. So you're changing that potential energy of the hammer into a driving force. And from that, you get the stress in the piles due to the driving force. Now, why do we need that? Well, we need that to find out how strong or how difficult the driving is. So if generally, if you're below the 7 MPA mark, you're looking at easy driving. And if you're above the 14 MPA uh, Mark, you're looking at very hard driving, and that makes a difference in the C values. And for the MathCAD geeks there, yes, that's a nested if statement. So you're almost into programming with MathCAD there. From our tables uh, in the code of practice, table eight, you can get your uh, C value, CC for the compression of the pile. And the compression of the pile, the head and the dolly and the packing and the three values which you add together to get the 2.6 value I've got there. The elastic compression of the pile is also taken from that table to give you CP, which is related to the length of the pile. The quake again picked out and in there is now just 1.3. So you add all those together to get a grand total of 5.88 and that gives you the ultimate driving resistance using the highly formula as 58.38 kilonewtons. We have a strength reduction factor of 0.5 or a factor of safety of two. So our design load on that pile is 26 kilonewtons. So not a lot, but there, there it is. Now you would think you'd be able to produce a pile capacity table simply from that. And so we can use in this case, the table to produce uh, an array of values for the design resistance and the pile stresses. Now, the reason I've put in the pile stresses is to show that the, the stress in the pile changes with the set. And so at the smaller sets, the driving goes from easy to medium, which means your table there is really only valid in the easy range. Um, so the plot function in MathCAD allows you to plot this diagram of your set versus your resistance. And I've put on the two lines there to show you where the limitations are. So when you're in this this area, you're good. If you're in this area, you really need to be calculating the pile again with the revised values based on the stress in the pile. Uh, 
so this is the code of practice from uh, the civil engineering. And this gives you the values for CC, CP and CQ, which go together to get your total compressions. So there you see that the um, CC is based upon the compression in the head of the timber pile, the dolly or helmet or driving cap if you're using that, and any packing you're using. And so for timber, you're adding these values together. And it ranges from easy driving through to very hard driving from a CC of 1.3 to, to 5. And you, and you add these values together if you've got a dolly and you've got a packing under there. Um, CP is for the pile length. And that gives you uh, values for timber, concrete and steel, again, ranging from easy to very hard driving. And the CQ for the quake, it ranges from 1.3 to 3.8. And it's a matter of engineering judgment with sort of values you put into these uh, as well. The calculation changes um, if you're driving it to refusal. Uh, so says the, uh, uh, the code of practice. And we, we bring back the uh, basic parameters. So we've already stated them before. So my convention is to put restated uh, parameters in gray. Uh, this time you're looking at a different set. So in theory, your set is zero. So it's driven to refusal. Now, if you put that in the formula, you'll end up with an error. Um, so you have to change the error slightly, the, the formula slightly. So again, we, we calculate the efficiency of the blow. Um, the, C, and the CP, CC and CQ values uh, all change uh, because you're looking at very hard driving uh, in there because the stress is so much higher uh, there. You get your initial driving resistance based upon the, the first of the uh, highly formula and then you get a modification factor which has pulled out the ratio of R to C. And so your ultimate driving resistance is given by this modification in there. So we're dropping it down quite a bit from 158 to 91. 